Happy Earth Week. I'm King County Executive Dow Constantine. Uh, behind me are some examples of vehicles in King County's growing zero emission fleet. The county, you see, is a leader in the transition to a zero emission fleet powered by clean energy, cutting greenhouse gas emissions, lowering maintenance costs, improving air quality, and even reducing noise pollution. Metro is on track to be one of the first large transit agencies in North America to be 100% zero emission. We have the first waste management, uh, we are the first waste management agency in the country to have a zero emission heavy duty truck. We're using it to haul uh, trash from the, the uh, transfer station at Enumclaw to the Cedar Hills landfill every day. Uh, King County International Airport is the first in the US with a fully electric sweeper. And we are soon to introduce, uh, I believe, the nation's first hybrid electric uh, fire truck at the airport uh, to replace our oldest diesel model. These vehicles are all rolling examples of our commitment to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and addressing the climate crisis. And that commitment has only become more urgent as the consequences of a changing climate continue to affect communities across our region and around the globe. The progress King County is making brings me hope. In addition to transitioning our own fleet to non-polluting alternatives, we're working to expand equitable access to electric charging stations across the county. And I am pleased to announce that the Washington State Department of Congress, Commerce has awarded King County some $6 million to install more than 400 charging ports at locations all across the county, at community centers and fire stations, at multifamily residential buildings, at retirement homes and retail centers, and metro bus bases, as well as many more locations. In fact, in a few minutes, you're going to hear from a retired metro employee and a Horizon House resident, Bill Roach, who worked with King County to secure funding for 20 charging ports at his retirement community in Seattle. Thank you, Bill, for your continuing commitment to public service. These sorts of partnerships between the state and local governments, with community organizations, with the commercial sector, are essential to uh, being able to collectively accomplish our shared goal. It's a great example of how King County can work collaboratively with our residents to combat climate change and meet greenhouse gas reduction goals for the benefit of our community and of the whole world. So thank you for the Department of Con Commerce in recognizing us with this critical funding. And thank you to all of our partners in this work. Together, we are making King County more resilient, more sustainable, and more equitable for future generations. And now it is my honor to turn the mic over to one of our county leaders in that work, the general manager of Metro Transit, Michelle Allison. Michelle. Thank you, Executive. It's great to be here today and to show just how committed King County is to greening our fleet at King County Metro. We're, our aim is to create cleaner air and a healthier environment, and one of the best ways that we can do that is transitioning our fleet to zero emission. Our old diesel friends that you see over here in the lot are a reminder of just how far we've come and also how much work we have to go. A time not so long ago, the diesel bus, along with all traffic vehicles, contributed to the greenhouse gas emissions. And Metro wanted to do our part, not only in reducing the number of single occupancy vehicles, but contributing to cleaner air and a healthier community. That's why Metro was the first public transit agency to adopt the hybrid bus back in 2004. And here's a couple other fun history facts. Metro continued to invest in zero emission fleet, purchasing 174 electric trolley buses in 2015. And five years later, we celebrated giving our last fully diesel bus, the good old gold tire, and retiring in 2020. Today, we're looking forward to a bright zero emission future. 
The brightly colored bus you see behind me today is one of the 51 elect battery electric buses that are already in service. These vehicles and many more that are soon to follow have Metro on schedule to become one of the first large transit agencies in North America with 100% zero emission by 2035. Our fleet is growing to support the more than a million riders that we serve every week who use public transit to get to school, to work, and many other important destinations. In the next two years, 89 expanded range battery electric buses will arrive from Gillig, who is a leading manufacturer in zero emission fleet. Those buses will be charged at the interim base, and we broke ground on that just recently, uh, just a little bit south of here. These are the vehicles of the future, and you'll see them on the roads serving the public, but what you won't see are pollutants. And what you will experience is a cleaner air quality, and our communities will benefit. At Metro, we are excited to embody the county's efforts to reduce our local pollution and tackle climate change. And one of our alumni who's here with us today really uh, dedicated a service in doing that for King County Metro. Bill Roach is a bit of an icon, and this morning I realized there's actually a web page at Metro dedicated to Bill, which is incredible. Uh, during his time with Metro, Bill helped develop a program that encouraged people to get out of their cars. In his 28-year transportation career in Seattle, he has done more than anyone to shape the alternative travel practices in Washington State. He's the first person to think if you ride a van pool, use a U-Pass, or understand that flex car used to be part of our language. He was with us at Metro to start our van pool program, which is now one of the largest in the country and has over a thousand vehicles in it. I'm incredibly honored that such history is here today, bringing us into the next chapter of our zero emission efforts. Bill, thank you so much for joining and specifically, thank you for your service to King County and King County Metro. Well, good morning. At Horizon House, uh, I, in, I chair the Environment Committee a senior, in a Horizon House, which is a senior nonprofit housing facility of 500 residents on First Hill in Seattle. With me today is Sean McMahon, uh, the chief engineer at Horizon House. And it's important that you know that we're here together. We are honored to accept this invitation to speak today about our energy conservation efforts. As senior staff and residents, we have been collaborating on a range of sustainable initiatives to help us reach our goal of carbon neutrality by 2032 for the whole Horizon House campus. This is not an aspirational goal, but an actionable goal. The energy grant that uh, we have received in partnership with King County will enable us to install 20 electric vehicle charging stations with uh, additional storage battery capacity. The charging stations meet the demand of a growing number of residents who are investing in electric vehicles for mobility. More importantly, the charging stations will also enable us to develop and power an electric car share program for those residents who wish to give up their personal car for a reduced number of car trips that they now take living in downtown Seattle. It will help us reduce the demand for parking on campus and present an attractive asset as well. Further, as funds and systems uh, become available, we will be transitioning our heating system from gas-fired steam to electric-powered energy efficient heat pumps. We're also strongly considering adopting an innovative system that captures waste heat as a part of a First Hill-wide district heat system which will enable our heat pump uh, system to gain even more uh, energy efficiency. We're also exploring the installation of solar power on the roofs of our buildings to, meet, to help meet this increased electric demand and enhance our long-term energy resilience. We greatly appreciate working with Ross Freeman from uh, County Executive off Constantine's office and this EV grant finances an incredibly important first step toward carbon neutrality. Thank you. And I, 
And I, uh, it's with pleasure that I introduce to you Chris Stubbs, who's the Deputy Director of King County Solid Waste Division. Good morning, everyone. We're proud of our contributions to King County's 2020 Strategic Climate Action Plan goal of cutting countywide greenhouse gas emissions in half by the end of this decade. And we know that electrification of our fleet vehicles is one of the most important ways we can contribute to this important milestone. Thanks to Executive Constantine's vision, as one of the largest counties in the nation, King County is proving to manufacturers that there is strong demand for vehicles that cut greenhouse gas emissions. When we launched our battery electric heavy duty truck in 2022, uh, it was the first electric truck being used uh, of its kind in the waste management agency, uh, by any waste management agency in North America. And it was built locally at Kenworth's Renton assembly plant. We're continuing to work closely with Renton to, with Kenworth to develop and improve on this technology so it can be adopted more broadly. This pilot program provides valuable operational experience to our employees and it's allowed us to evaluate opportunities to expand our electric fleet vehicles moving forward. We're also proud of our fast growing fleet of electric yard trucks, which are critical to the successful operation of our transfer stations. We now have four electric yard trucks at two of our transfer stations. And two of these trucks were funded with the help of the state and federal funding from the Washington Department of Ecology and the United States Environmental Protection Agency. We're continuing to electrify our yard truck fleet, including plans for rolling out 10 new trucks for five of our transfer stations over the next year. It's estimated that each yard truck reduces our diesel consumption by about 1,000 gallons and eliminates about 9.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents in emissions every year. In addition to cutting greenhouse gas emissions, these quiet vehicles don't produce diesel particulates, reducing air and noise pollution for our employees and for the neighboring communities. We're thrilled that through this work, in conjunction with the great work of our King County partners here today, uh, that we can make a huge impact on reducing region-wide greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you all for being here today. We have thousands of vehicles, thousands of vehicles from park maintenance to uh, major transit vehicles and heavy duty equipment uh, like the truck behind me. And we are going to be aggressively working to replace those with zero emission vehicles for our own fleet and to drive change in the industry so that other agencies across the country can have the opportunity to do the same. Thank you all for being here today.